you guys hear that? Yeah, yeah. It gives you a warning box now. I used to not it do that. It used to not do that. You can go, forget this, I'm leaving. You can leave the meeting if you want it. I used to tell everybody in advance. Um, so we are recording this, but I will cut all this out and then I'll pause for a quick second before I go ahead and introduce you. <sighs> okay, we're back again. I love this. Welcome ladies, welcome everyone. We are back for another week of um, our virtual spotlight series. And we have a cool new brand that we are going to learn about this week called Planetary. And let me just start by saying we have Erin Day here, who we go a little ways back, I want to say, you know, um, I guess since CBD became a brand that you could start bringing into spas and all that sort of stuff several years ago with another brand that she was working with. And um, I, we are, I got to tell you, Stacy, you are so blessed to have this woman on your yes, team. I know. Um, <laughs> you guys are going to slay it because you have great products, but also because you have Erin on your side oh, and yeah. as your okay. champion. So, <laughs> I'm just throwing that out there just because I know I well spent years knowing Erin. Um, so, of course, we have Erin Day, as I mentioned, but we also have uh, Miss Stacy. She is the founder and CEO of Planetary. And um, she has been, uh, prior to this, 15-year career in uh, healthcare. So not only she kind of got that background, which is incredible and super beneficial, I'm sure, um, she really um, has this desire to um, and passion for helping people live their best life um, through providing uh, healing, natural, and effective uh, products for her consumers and spas. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it on over to you. I think, Erin, you said you were kicking us off. Is that correct? I am. And thank you, Holly. And thank you for that amazing introduction. I so appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, yes, I had the privilege of being your rep. And when I saw this great organization and that Jocelyn was also a part of it, I thought, well, we need to partner and we need to be a part of this incredible place. So I am happy to be here and you, you helped me be better at my job. So I am just so happy to be connected with you again. So oh, uh, <laughs> thank you. But like Holly said, so my background is kind of in wellness, but also uh, has always had a thread of connection woven through it. So I've worked in oncology, stroke, luxury, and like Holly said, the CBD, Space for the last few years. So everything I've done has had the greater goal of making the world a better place by helping people, you know, one person at a time, which you in the spa industry, you do that, whether that's in a treatment room or just the right conversation at the right time, right? It's all about connection. And so we are so happy to be here today. And I'm so happy to be here with Stacy, the CEO and founder of Planetary. So, you know, we would love for this to be interactive. If you have any questions, let us know, I'll interrupt at any time. Um, but we are here to talk about CBDA, so we will get into that. And by the end of this, you'll have a thorough understanding of what is CBDA. So uh, just a spoiler for the spa industry, it can help lower your cost per treatment. So um, it is just, it's more bioavailable, it's raw, it's pure. So that is why we are here. So without further ado, I'm gonna, we're gonna do this kind of Oprah style. So. <laughs> <laughs> Stacy, um, I was so excited to just discover Planetary. I felt like there was finally a true differentiator in the yes. industry. Yes. So I've been in the CBD space for years, but I wasn't even familiar with CBDA. What is CBDA? So very common question. Thank you for starting with that. Uh, people tend to lump it all together and it is different. So just to uh, explain a little bit, the cannabis plant, be it the marijuana or the hemp side, those are just legal designations. The plant herself makes CBDA. It's through heat chemicals that are used in extraction that commonly convert it or decarboxylate it into the CBD that we commonly see. But what's made by the plant is CBDA along with some of the other A's. And so hopefully by the end of this, you understand that the A does make all the difference. So you touched on extraction. I would love to like learn a little bit more about extraction in the CBD space mm -hmm. and what Planetary does differently. Perfect. So our big differentiator is that we extract using water. So uh, I think everyone else in the industry uses ethanol or CO2 or sometimes combinations thereof. Those are the really common extraction methods. Um, ethanol soaks the, the plants in, in a vat usually of heated, but it can be cold. 
ethanol. And from that, they're able to extract the cannabinoids, but it does leave some of that residual solvent. And then because it was in that solvent, it decarboxylates it into CBD and you lose that raw natural state. So it actually changes the chemical molecular structure. The other common one is CO2, which uses really high pressure. And that pressure does damage, it actually decreases the bioassay, which is just a biological term for the life force within the cannabinoids. So they're actually less effective after undergoing that pressure. Again, those are the, those are the common ways of extraction. And even with the CO2, um, it's often then used with solvents afterwards to, to clean it up even further. So that's, that's kind of what's been in the industry and that's what it was when I first came into the industry and we set out to do something different and cleaner. So we use Colorado water to extract and it brings out a full spectrum of these acidic cannabinoids. So prior to your water extraction, it was thought that you could really just like juice the hemp plant to get the acidic raw cannabinoids, but those have a lower percentage. Yes. It tastes pretty bad too. I've, done it. <laughs> <laughs> I've tried it all. I'm the guinea pig. Uh, it, it does have a strong taste. And then when you juice, you end up getting a really low percentage of the cannabinoids. And then it's seasonal. It's like having fresh lettuce. You only have it at harvest. And in Colorado, that's once a year. So the availability of that is quite limited as well. Okay, and so it was thought that the acidic cannabinoids were not stable. Correct. Can you talk a little bit about what you have discovered? Yes, so that's the biggest myth that we bust constantly. Um, the, the rumor in the industry is that CBDA is not stable. In fact, it's because of the way it's extracted that makes it unstable. So even in the absence of heat, um, the ethanol and other product solutions that are, that are used in extraction cause the decarb reaction, even without heat. So by never using those, our plants never touch those hydrocarbons. They maintain in that stable form. Um, we have been extracting for almost two and a half years. And we recently retested um, powder that we had extracted over two years ago. And it's still perfectly stable, no decarb. So that was, that's pretty exciting. That's amazing. <laughs> so I would love for you to share your journey, the how and the why. Like, why you are, how you got here yeah the journey I, of planetary thank you i do have an interesting past so i um at 21 graduated college and was an icu nurse so i started um as a nurse for a few years then i went and did anesthesiology um, and practiced that for a little over 10 years and then went to business school and completely got out of healthcare and um, did real estate development and i've started several businesses so kind of done serial entrepreneur path i've started nonprofits and worked in that sector a little bit um, and then three years ago was introduced to the hemp and i studied it kind of from a systems view and i saw a major bottleneck with the processing and also i wanted to find a healthier way to do processing so it this is a nice way of kind of merging the healthcare background with the business mind. So I get to be a science nerd and a businesswoman. Um, and working in healthcare, you know, I witnessed chronic pain daily and the depression that stems from it, as well as dangerous and addicting opioids. If y'all don't know, we are in a crisis of opioids in this country as well as the dangerous NSAIDs. So people are in pain and then what they're taking to treat their pain has a ton of side effects. And so you, you're kind of chasing your tail with those. And I kept thinking there has, to be, there has to be a better alternative. And I believe that the answer is found in nature. So like it, pain is universal, mm -hmm. you know, unfortunately. And so I wanna dive a little bit deeper into how CBDA affects pain. Can you explain kind of how that varies from, and you said NSAIDs, if you can just kind of explain a little bit about what that okay. means too. NSAIDs stand for non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, and that's the category, they're mostly over the counter. So that's ibuprofen, naproxen, or Aleve, aspirin. It's those things you take for a headache, not, not acetaminophen or Tylenol, but most of the other over-the-counter pain meds fall in that category of NSAIDs. And they help your headache or knee pain through a group of uh, receptors called the COX-2. It's cyclooxygenase, you don't wanna know the whole long term, but there's, there's two groups. The COX-2 is more the inflammation and the pain receptors, and then the COX-1 has an effect on prostaglandins and the stomach and the kidneys are kind of the more 
prevalent side of those. So you take 800 milligrams of ibuprofen for your headache, for example, it will help the inflammation and the pain, but it's also gonna have negatory effects on your stomach and your kidneys. And I've often felt that. I'm definitely an, an subscriber to like that every pill is a little bit of poison. And if I have a migraine, I don't care what poison I get, like I'll take <laughs> anything. True. But to That's have true. the answer like truly found in nature and to think that th these products can have the positive benefits without this right. scary side effects. And that's unique to CBDA. So CBD is not a COX-2 inhibitor. It has some actions on pain, but through the endocannabinoid system, which CBDA also does. But in addition, CBDA acts on the COX-2 receptors, which is huge. So that's, that's for me personally, it has replaced ibuprofen. And I used to Take ibuprofen. <laughs> yeah, no, agreed. And yeah. I've even tried, and we'll go through our products, but like our drink additive when I wake up with a bad headache and it really does work. So I'm happy about that as well. <laughs> um, I want to talk about planetary has strong partnerships and I know they're very strategic mm -hmm. and it's, you know, really strong in the athletic world. So partners with the NFL Alumni Association, Carmichael Training Systems, Rocky Mountain Triathlete Club, yeah. um, Marathon Runners, and uh, Fun, coincidentally, uh, Stacy and I both presented to UFC fighters in the last yeah. week. Different groups, yeah. different gyms, but you know, groups of UFC fighters. So they have pain. <laughs> they have pain. Um, I know you are a bodybuilder, Ironman triathlete. I am a yogi. I'm a walker. Like I am not an endurance athlete. But what is the draw? What can you explain the synergy between CBDA and these high level athletes? As an athlete, and whether you're walking and doing yoga every day or you're biking 100 miles every day, it's not just what you can do once. It's what you can repeat day after day. And the ability to do that depends upon your recovery, your sleep, your muscles repairing themselves, and reduction in pain. I mean, the best athletes have high pain tolerances because you have to be able to push through it. You know, in Ironman, your body starts telling you, we should stop. This is kind of ridiculous. And you have to push through that. So, um, so we found a, a great synergy with athletes because of the ability to recovery and because it's a natural pain reliever. So the ins back to the ibuprofen and the insights, they have um, bad effects on the kidneys, especially in the endurance sports. So when you run a marathon, for example, your body's going to go through this process. It's called rhabdomyolysis, where some of your muscles are breaking down, which is, which is normal. That's what happens, right? But your kidneys, to simplify it, work um, with simple diffusion. So think of like a mesh screen. And when you have breakdown in the muscles, those are large molecule sizes, and they're going to get kind of caught in the screen. So that can kind of back up and simplifying the medical aspects of it, but it- Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when combined with dehydration, which is inevitable with long sports, it really causes a lot of bad effects. And then if you're taking an ibuprofen or an NSAID, that's gonna cause further insult to the kidneys through their action with COX-1 and the prostaglandins. So there are people, um, not long ago, someone ran the Key West Marathon and then, and then died, I think two days later. Um, I had a, an anesthesia classmate who ran a marathon, experienced complete renal failure, and ended up with a kidney transplant afterwards. So it, it does happen. It happens um, more than we realize. So if there's a way to treat the pain and boost recovery without the side effects, that's huge. Yeah, that is huge. I mean, it was a world I didn't know anything about, the endurance <laughs> athlete. I told Stacy the closest I've gotten to a marathon is handing out water in college at like the 21st mile. And that's that was as close as I want to get. Like <laughs> that's it. So I, this is huge to me, and and really just exciting to be a part of these partnerships. Um, so when you and I first met, I asked you your vision, yes. and that really affected me. Please share your vision. Okay. I'm a big believer in starting with why. I think things are rooted in passion. When you're on hour 80 of this work week, <laughs> what keeps you going is your passion, your drive. Um, so I'm really strong in passion. And as I shared with Erin to try to convince her to our team, uh, for me, it's all about getting these products out into the hands of people that could benefit from them and doing it in a meaningful way. 
meaningful. And that was the word that resonated <laughs> with me. Holly knows me like that, like spoke to my heart, right? Like meaningful. And, and I see you really walk that walk and I see planetary. I'm so proud to be a part of this company because I see this firsthand. Can you explain kind of some of those partnerships and kind of the pairing of CBDA and autism? Okay. Yeah, we've actually found, we've had a few physicians who are prominent in the autism um, realm and also seizures and, and treatment of uh, disabled children, especially in older, have found us and have been referring patients to us. So we started a kindness program where we give significant discounts to those in medical need. Um, and we've partnered with uh, Hope Grows for Autism because they've seen such incredible results. So it's a way to, we're gonna do an educational webinar with them and it's a way to you know, provide therapy and treatment alternatives for these mothers who are desperately seeking answers for their children. And they don't want them gorked out on drugs all the time. They actually are looking for something that, that is effective. Um, so we've had reports back from some of the, the parents of these children and one in particular that I really appreciate. He, he, he's 17, severely autistic. He knows that he feels better and he can focus better and his anger is controlled when he takes our products. So she says, I have to stay overstocked because he won't start the day without his planetary bottle there. So it's really, it's really sweet. I really appreciate them. Yeah, no, that, those are the things that help every day. Like <laughs> yeah. when you're tired, that keeps you going. Yeah. So I just want to make sure everyone's kind of clear the main differences between CBDA and CBD. So think of CBDA as the, the mother cannabinoid. So um, actually CBGA is made before that, but the plant makes CBDA and then through process, it gets decarboxylated into CBD. So it's the acidic precursor. It comes before CBD but they have different pH, different pKa, different molecule size, which is all a science nerdy way of saying it acts differently in the body. So being acidic, it actually bonds better in the body. Having, it has a more favorable molecule size and parameters that, that do bind better. Um, there was a, a human clinical trial, which aren't, there aren't that many of them yet in cannabis um, that, that compared CBDA versus CBD. They administered those products um, and then checked blood levels afterwards. And the CBDA had an 18 times greater level in the blood after administration versus CBD. So that shows you how much more our bodies are actually uptaking this versus just excrete what's not needed. And then the THCA, which is does not make you high, it's the precursor to THC. We have it in small amounts. Um, in our raw material. And that shows up 30 times greater results. So the acidic forms do have better bioavailability, which just means it plugs in better, works better in our bodies and also a dog. <laughs> yes, no, and you feel it. You feel it as soon as I tried the products, I could feel them working, definitely. Yeah. So any questions so far? Sorry, I'm getting there. I was starting to <laughs> <laughs> um, so can you touch a little bit on, you know, the, when people hear THC, even if there's another letter behind it, um, or a number, right? Cause we know that those numbers can often, um, yep. mean that those are the psychoactive, um, uh, that's a psychoactive ingredient, so to speak. Can you touch a bit on that? When you speak about, um, these higher levels in the body, right? That's great. Uh, I think, right? But for yeah. those who don't really understand this, to to some that might be uh, create a, a fear factor in that. Okay, if I have more of this in my body, what happens if I'm, you know, uh, have a random drug test at work, or um, or I am applying for a new job and they do drug testing um, yeah. and they want to see what's in the body. So can you talk a little bit about that? Because that will definitely be a hot button this year. Perfect. That's the number one question. So let's. Um, why you brought it up? I want. <laughs> I love to address the elephant in the room and do something yeah. nice. Um, so marijuana legally means the higher THC and, you know, we live in Colorado, so this is legal recreationally. And 
for whatever benefit you want from it, or if it is purely recreational, the way it makes you high is through the CB1 or cannabinoid receptors in the brain. So that is a very specific action that it acts you know, in the brain and you have this, this high feeling and, and it's a little different for everybody. That's not kind of the side we, we play on the decaffeinated side. So it's the less than 0.3%. So when we do the water extraction, we go from the plant to this full spectrum powder using the water. That powder is concentrated, right? Nobody takes that as an end user. That's just the raw materials that are uber concentrated. Then from that, we formulate the end products. Um, that concentrate has, most of ours have zero, zero, zero of the Delta nine. And that's the big like makes you high THC that people are more familiar with. We have THCA, which is a valuable cannabinoid in and of itself. It does not make you high at all, um, but it ends up being tiny amounts in the finished products. So ours are usually either non-detect or less than 0.01 or something like way, way, way below the legal limits. Um, you could take all of this and you're not even going to get close to high. So not a concern at all. The drug testing is something that we that we get asked, um, and it depends on the type of testing. So I've I've kind of done guinea pig stuff on myself because I don't I don't use THC. So I've I take a lot of our product and I've tested myself several times, and it's always negative for THC. But there is a type of test that's really generic and simple that tests for all cannabinoids, and so it there are cannabinoids, so it would be positive for cannabinoids as a whole. Most drug tests are specific to THC. So we don't have THC levels in our products. We don't have any Delta 9. So is that clear as mud or <laughs> any more elaboration? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, it definitely uh, helps. And one thing I, I wanna point out and, and perhaps, you know, I, I may be jumping the gun, maybe you'll share this later on, but um, for those of you that are listening in right now or watching this on the playback, um, at a future date, you know, when you go to the planetary website, they have a transparency tab. And on that tab, they have literally everything you could want or need to know about um, CBDA, um, where their ingredients come from. They have their cer um, certificate of analysis, which is really important, particularly for those um, spas. I know I needed to provide those when I, uh, in the, particularly in the early days, and it's still pretty early for a lot of for a lot of businesses outside yeah. of you know Colorado and even within Colorado. Um, people are still wary; they're not sure, and they want to know where things are coming from because anybody could do a pop up. CBD business, let's be honest. Um, so definitely go to their website. It's true. I mean, it really is. I've, the things I've seen come across my desk sometimes, I'm like, there's no way on gr God's green earth, I could bring that, my 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 owner would let me bring that into my business. Um, so anyways, you know, no disrespect, there's a place for that somewhere yeah. for sure, but just not in some of the places that I've worked. But um, so definitely go there, take those, look at those um, COAs and download them, right? I imagine, I believe you can download them if I'm not mistaken from looking the other day um, and use that as information to share, not only with, if you're looking to bring in CBDA to your business, um, to those decision makers, but also to your clients so that it helps them with awareness and understanding. There's a, there's a plethora of information on the transparency page and it's really, it's, it's cool. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a science geek, but I'm not a science geek. I, I don't know. Like, I totally get it all, but I don't get it all. And it's very fascinating. Yeah, me too, Holly. <laughs> yeah, I'm like super into your transparency page because it's, it's a lot. And I'm like, ooh, I could dig deeper and go deeper and deeper. It's cool. So kudos, by the way. Everything we do is rooted in science and we are big on transparency and testing. And, and so on every product, just for example, there's a QR code. And that takes you, even the samples. Even the samples, Holly. <laughs> I, I don't know many, I've never seen samples that have a QR code. So that so. takes you to that transparency page. Um, what is common in the industry, and again, zero disrespect, what is common is one potency on a product at some point. Um, we test every single batch and we do five tests on every batch. We do potency, of course, and so we're showing you that what is on the label is in fact in the, in the product. Um, and also that the THC is non-detect or super, super low. 
We do microbials to prove that there's not any, uh, any of that growing. Uh, we do residual solvents, which is, even though we don't use solvents, we test for that, kind of to prove that we don't use solvents. And also because that's a test that not a lot of companies do, or if they do, you'll see really high levels of ethanol. And over time, I don't believe that's the best for our body, but you know, okay. Um, and also pesticides and heavy metals. So we're proving that there's no pesticides from the, we test the hemp plants as they come in. We test every batch of raw extract concentrate, and then we test every end product. Um, so heavy metals is the last one. And that those are common in hemp. The hemp plant is pretty remarkable at soil remediation. Mm -hmm. So it can pull up pesticides and heavy metals from the soil, which is great for remediating the planet. Uh, and I don't want it in my body and I don't want it in your body. So we make sure that that's not coming through in any of the, so all of our hemp comes from, our facility is up in Evans, which is a suburb of Greeley, Colorado. And all of our hemp is grown at a USDA organic farm, partner farm of ours in Greeley. And everything else is done in our facility. So we don't farm, but we do everything after that. We go all the way to the finished product labeled and, and ship out from that facility, which is USDA organic certified. Um, yeah, which so is not easy to get. <laughs> it's not. So for the entire product to be certified USDA organic is quite an achievement. Whereas, you know, sometimes something may say organic because a the piece of it, organic yeah, something, something was, but the entire product. So, and I don't know if you can see with the lighting, but all the labeling that talks about other. Yeah. So we can get accomplishments. Them. Maybe that's a better um, one. This one might be a better one. So see the organic label and all the seals, the gluten-free, vegan, cruelty-free. <laughs> We put all the ingredients on um, the QR code again. And then this is this is a new product that's not out yet. So you're getting the sneak peek. Launching today. Body butter. <laughs> Yay. Awesome. We're planning on launching it today, but it is now. It's, um, it's launched. It's here. Um, but yeah, the ingredients are minimal. They're intentional and functional. Um, the products, you know, now we can get kind of to show you, you know, as you can see, and hopefully you can see with the lighting. Um, the products look great on a shelf. A little bit closer. Yeah, there we go. There ah, we go. there we go. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Holly. <laughs> so from um from Brooke. And if we can digress really quickly, um, and then you know, maybe go back into the rest of your presentation. Um, you mentioned Delta 9, mm -hmm. uh, which many of us know, although I didn't know until I started researching, you know, in the early days that I wanted to bring CBD into my um, into my spa mm -hmm. and um, learned real quick what Delta 9 was uh, mm -hmm. and that it's in a lot of products. But one other thing is, um, do you know much about Delta 8 and does your product contain any part, um, any that part of the plant? Emphatically, no. Uh, yes, I do. I do know a bit about it because I was on a webinar hosted by a law firm uh, in February as their like science expert. So I got to do a lot of research for that. Delta 8 has been a little bit controversial um, and it, it was playing with the gray areas of the law. So Colorado has is, is now disallowed Delta 8. It's been really popular in states like Tennessee, for example, where they don't have uh, a medical marijuana program. And it was touted as hemp derived, therefore legal. And it does have a psychoactive effect on the CB1 receptors. It's anywhere from 50 to 75% as strong. So it's not quite as strong, but you could also just take more and have the same effect. They tout us it has some benefits um, and I think it probably does. My issue, I guess, with it and the reason we don't play in the Delta-8 space at all is that it's, it's grown in such minute amounts in the plants that in order to get a heavy Delta-8, it's heavily processed. So it's processed with toluene and a lot of chemical processes to get to there. And my concern is that we're not, nobody's testing for the byproducts. In any chemical reaction, you have byproducts. And so when you're taking, um, and we could, people could do it from our extract and then just ultra, ultra process it and, and get down to like concentrating that one minor cannabinoid. There's a lot of byproducts with that that aren't being tested. Um, there's an independent lab who went through the expense of testing a few Delta 8 products they found in a convenience store. 
Um, and they found some illegal flavorings and a whole lot of chemicals. There were like more than 40 chemicals that were found in this. So that's the kind of stuff that it's, you know, to each her own, but it's not for me personally. Our, our whole motto is to keep things more natural, more raw. I think there's, there's value in what mother nature made and kind of less messed around with. So that's our approach. I mean, everybody has kind of their own, their own recipe and their own desires. So that's, that's the short version of the Delta 8. <laughs> awesome. No, thank you for that. I think that provides some clarification. And I, and I kind of feel like too, with you, maybe personally, I think the less stuff inside yeah. things is better. Yes. You know, um, this, our, our skin is the largest organ in our body. And so whatever we put on us, or in our hair or whatever is gonna absorb and yes. it could absorb in mass amounts. And so I personally very conscious of that, but again, you're right to each his own, you know, some, for some, you know, it's, that's great, you know. It, yeah. it, it, part of this comes from my own kind of health journey and experience. And when I got diagnosed with celiac, I mean, you can see I have really long hair and I, was using a shampoo. I had never read the label of shampoo. It seemed like a decent shampoo, but I was having all these breakouts around my neck and I was still like not healing like I should. And one day in the shower, I read shampoo and hydrolyzed wheat protein is in most shampoos. So the, I switched shampoos immediately, skin cleared up, felt better, same thing with lotion. So to your point, even if things we aren't ingesting, even when they're topical, they are getting absorbed and it, and it does matter. And if you're someone who's more sensitive to chemicals and foreign things like I am, then it, I think it does matter. I think a lot of us are sensitive and we just, yeah. oh, sorry, <laughs> that was Zeus, my big <laughs> dog and my daughter who decided. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Uh, well, and it's funny, she is not celiac, but um, she, <laughs> she, <laughs> uh, well, you know, never a dull moment. It was bound to happen eventually. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, we are live recording and now she's hiding. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, um, I think <laughs> going back to what I was going to say, oh, and you see her artwork back there though, right? Yeah. I love it. That's her art wall. Yeah. Oh, there. Um, featuring. Yeah. Um, <laughs> art for you. Um, anyways, you know, just going back to that, um, I think a lot of us are more sensitive mm -hmm. to things than we think, you know, and um, like, if we're not really listening to our bodies or taking those signals, right? Like for you, you're like, I didn't know what that meant. And that I have this rash and I don't know why I keep having this. We have to pay attention to a lot of the things that mm, touch us, right? Yeah. And that we consume. And um, it's not just about say eating organic. It's also about, you know, mm. what, what we're putting on and, um, and utilizing um, products that have as few ingredients as possible um, and certainly that have things that are are better for our our bodies and our skin for the long-term benefit yes. you know and so we talked about this like i think what was it two weeks ago we had um ellie whalen on here um and she she's has a company called spirology you two should talk um she did a whole presentation on NSAIDs essentially and um talked about you know that the the damage that it does to our bodies and we also talked about asthma and it's very interesting that a lot of what we we consume or we put on our bodies can actually contribute to that too so you know i appreciate your um your passion for um for for really every little detail in your ingredients and making sure that they are as safe and harmless as possible. Yeah, yes. that's great. Yes, healing without harm. Healing without there harm. Is a way. Yes. That's that's Aaron. That's an Aaron quote. <laughs> but it's, thank you, Holly. And that's a perfect segue to get into the products too. So, uh, but everything is very intentional, functional, pure, raw, sustainable. Like it's, it's such a natural alignment in the spa world, right? Where we're, we're all just trying to do our part. So. Probably, I, I wasn't gonna start with this, but maybe because we were kind of talking about stories, like this is our muscle rub. And I think the story behind the creation of this is really interesting. Stacy, <laughs> can you tell us about that story? 
Yes, uh, and we actually had a good blog post that CTS, Carmichael Training Systems, had written about um, our chemistry manager, Ethan, who create this product. He's also an athlete. Um, so we, this was the first in our athletes line. So we asked our, our partnership with CTS and we asked some of the athletes, what are you looking for and how would it functionally fit into your life best? Like what's the optimal use case for this? So in the beginning, all our products were all in glass jars. So this one is plastic, so it can be thrown in the gym bag, for example. We wanted a rub on so that you can put on topically exactly where needed. It's got a little menthol to help absorption, but not too much. We didn't want that overwhelming menthol smell. Um, as she said, all of the ingredients were really sourced and intentional. And I'll give credit to Ethan, our chemistry manager, for, for the bulk of that. It's got a lot higher um, amount, so 1,500 milligrams of CBDA. And, and like we said, CBDA is stronger than CBD. Most of the pain sticks on the market are kind of the 300, 500 milligram range. So you're gonna, we really upped the ante on this one to make it uber effective. Um, so the feedback, the feedback on this one's been incredible. You can use it before a workout. If you, if you know you have a bum knee and you're about to go climb a mountain, put it on before, um, after the topicals don't really I mean, they last several hours, but it, it's not like you're going to overdose on it with rubbing it on. So you can apply liberally as needed. And the rub on again was designed with the athlete in mind. So if you're going to climb, rock climb, oh, well, of course, <laughs> again, yeah. I'm not that, and that athlete, but people rock climb, you want to be able to put this on and not have it make your fingers slippery. Yes. Or on a bicycle. You don't want to descend down a mountain with greasy hands. So that um, the salve is the other another topical that we have, but you apply with your hands. You <laughs> I know. <laughs> you don't want to have the greasy hand situation with, with doing the sports. Can you touch on the milligram piece? Um, I think there's, you know, is it, when you talk about 1500 milligrams, 500 milligrams, whatever, is that per jar, per dose? What's a dose? That type of thing. This is per container. So it's a 2.6 ounce container. And in this whole container is 1500 milligrams. It's harder to say how much per dose because it depends on how much. Um, I, I rub it on pretty pretty hard on my knee. So maybe have a little more. It's, I mean, we have a percentage so you can say it's definitely homogenized and there's a percentage, but it's harder to say per dose with topicals because um, people are gonna apply how they want to. With our ingestibles, it's it's precisely dosed and it'll be per dropper or the soft gels are our top seller. And I think part of it is because it's 20 milligrams per soft gel and it's an easy to swallow pill that people are used to. So that mm -hmm. if you really want to be precise with the dosing, that's an easy way to do it. Yeah, the soft gels are my personal favorite. That and the salve, Holly, you would love the salve. We'll have to send you some salve because you, Back bar, amazing, like the glide and it's just the smell is very subtle and the effects. I think this is our number one as far as multi-use product, right? I'll even use it on little mm -hmm. wrinkles, uh, bottom of your feet after a long day. Yeah. Um, and I always say like this rubbed on the bottom of your feet after a long day is amazing to have someone else rub it on your feet after a long day. Doubly amazing, yes. <laughs> even better, even better. And how, you know, we've created, you know, some treatments together um, previously. Would this be something that's more of like your spot treatment? So you might put this, say, on a particular area um, yeah. as that spot treatment, maybe even would heat benefit that as well? I yeah. think it would. Yeah, it would definitely start kind of activating heat it. Heat pressure bit. increases absorption into the skin. So, um, I like to be the guinea pig. So I got a massage on Sunday with our new body butter and I actually had her try, okay, this half my body do the body butter, this half do the salve, let's see how this works. Um, so those are always fun, but it does, you do get better absorption with the, with the heat and pressure. Cool. And, and the salve, definite, a great enhancement for mm -hmm. back bar. Yeah, it's amazing. And just, yeah, any spot treatments, this would upgrade be great. Upgrade your massage or upgrade your pedicure. Exactly. Exactly. And we also have like the sample size. So this is a deluxe sample like this. I'm terrible with that camera. 
<laughs> um, this is a deluxe sample. So some spas may purchase the sample, send that home, you know, with, with the client so that that doesn't prohibit a retail sale, then adding on like a discount at time of service, you know, to purchase the full size. So really as soon as someone tries the product, they buy it. And then we have such a high return rate, which really just speaks to the quality and the experience. Yeah. Last month it was 47% of our customers were returning. That's so yeah, that's pretty incredible. Oh, year to date, it's like 30%, which is still phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, so we're, we're really happy about that. <laughs> that's awesome. Congratulations. So yeah, and then also, you know, the, we have the infusion that sometimes people may do pre-treatment, like um, we have the individual size of those as well that you can do like in the relaxation room and then start the treatment. Um, so, and then the muscle rub, the, the best way to do that back bar would be again, probably to purchase the sample. It's not a chapstick. Stacy even had them say not for lip service on this, <laughs> but use it on the individual, send this home and then add that discount if they purchase a full size at that time so that you don't mess it up for yourself. Brilliant. Most people notice the topical, I mean, I noticed it within five minutes, 10 minutes maybe. So mm -hmm. that may be a good, you know, do it before the end. And if they feel better, they're like, oh, now you get to buy it. Yes. <laughs> And Holly, like you said, we, we developed treatments together. You helped me come up with incentive programs for your team, you know, things like that. Like, I love to partner with you and I love to be, you know, a rep that's supporting you. We can create a certain protocol for the month. You know, I can help with the opening order and kind of say this, if you're going to do X amount of treatments, this is kind of what your opening order should be. So we really want to work with you. Um, Stacy always says we're still small and nimble. <laughs> yeah. So we, we can, you know, if you have a great idea, bring it to us yeah. and let's see what we can create. Like things really do happen quickly and intentionally. Yeah. Because we have our own lab, our own chemists, formulators, we can do everything in house and our product development pipeline is really short. So if there, if there are ideas that um, you're interested in, please let us know. We'll definitely consider that. Well, I love that flexibility. We've talked a lot about that. And I, and I do think certainly because of COVID, a lot of vendors have had to um, tweak how they, their, their parts of their business model, including those orders, those opening orders. How do we get our foot in the door somewhere when we know we have something really great, um, but maybe, um, you know, in many ways, spas challenges are, have always been the same. It's, you know, we only have so much space. We only have so much, you know, space in our retail. We only have so much space in our menu. And um, to oftentimes to bring in a brand historically, uh, it's been, okay, you have to have these ginormous opening orders. You have to bring in every SKU or like 75% of the SKUs. And, and in some cases that can be a lot of SKUs. Um, but as operators, we're like, we want to partner with you. We want to bring you in. Um, but we can only do it on a smaller scale to get you in the door because we're not, otherwise we're not in the market. And so COVID has definitely challenged a lot of brands with kind of expanding to, to, to the business needs of our business, as opposed to the needs of theirs. And the return ends up being what they would have, uh, but previously quite, quite honestly. And so your flexibility in that is really great. One of the questions that we do have that popped up is, are there, um, are there minimum, um, uh, you know, quantity, uh, you know, like a, a number of quantity of items, products that you need to bring in, um, or a dollar amount for your opening minimums? I mean, what does that look like if we were to, if anyone were to contact you and say, hey, we want to give this a try? Yes, and do contact me, Erin at Planetary, <laughs> and I know you'll have that there, but no, um, to your point, Holly, it's a different world, right? And we're a new brand, we're unique. We love that about ourselves, but there's a huge education, right? That we like CBDA, we're the ones with like a stable CBDA with the water extraction. So to answer that, no, I will work with you. Like um, it can be a low opening order. Um, there aren't minimums as far as quantities, you know, threes historically kind of look better on the shelf, but that it doesn't need to be, it, it's just a conversation that we would see what works for you, where we can kind of fill a need for you and then grow that, you know, ideally we grow it. And so we definitely know, you know, if you want to bring in a topical and an ingestible, maybe we'd recommend the soft gels and the muscle rub if you have a lot of athletes. If you have more of 
you know, if, if a salve would be the right product for your spa, we would encourage that. But it, to answer your question, we are flexible, we're small, there's, there's no ego here. Like we want, we want a partner. Yeah. And I think that's a win-win. I mean, you know, and, and you, you touched on a word that was, um, uh, really resonated last week at our first in-person event, uh, that we had in, um, Snowbird, Utah. And our panel of pros conversation was about how to move from, um, a surviving to thriving. And one of the things that came up, which everybody was like, yes, this is what we want, is partners versus vendors. There is such a vast difference. Okay. And a partnership is exactly what you've described. It's being flexible. It's, it's really meeting your potential new um, account, your new client, where they're at based on their needs and fully customize that relationship and then being there for them with that training, that education, events, creating a protocol or whatever. And I certainly know you can do that. Um, and you have, we've, we've definitely like, like we said at the you know top of this um, hour that, you know, you are, you are definitely a partner and not, not a vendor. So, um, you know, Contact her. By the way, your information is all over the internet. Call me, email me. <laughs> <laughs> I've it all over Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. <laughs> You're, people are going to be contacting you left and right. <laughs> Pretty signs for your shelves if you'd like. Great. What varying the products can be lit or not. But yeah, we, we have adapted. So we've had, um, we have one chiropractic office that carries our products and she's not even trying to sell them and she's selling a lot of them, but she came back early on with feedback. She's like, I forget to tell them stuff or whatever patients want a pamphlet or, or something written, right? We think we're going to remember everything you said and then later yeah. we forget. So we created like index card size handouts so we can provide those to um, a store if they want to have them, um, you know, for educational content with the sales or with the, the spa providers, any of that. So important. Yeah, and if, you, if you're interested in trying the products, reach out to me. We're happy to send you samples. Mm -hmm. Love it. Love it. Oh my gosh. I need some of this on my shelves. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like desperate. I, I went rafting the other day and on Sunday and my shoulder and my hip, my right hip, because I was on the right side of the raft the whole time are just bugging me like crazy. Um, so I got to try your stuff, stick it on there and do that muscle rub. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should try it before I go out. Like, <laughs> Either way. Know was going down. <laughs> Ladies, do you have anything else to share with us? Are we missing anything? Am I? Did you want to do a graphic? Uh, we have one graphic that we'll share that just kind of shows. Yeah, if you want to show it. Okay. Well, I don't want to get back too deep in the science unless anybody wants to, but it's you were talking about the. Um, uh, Or maybe not. <laughs> I don't know if I have the ability to share. Okay, there okay. we go. Okay. You should. All right. Uh, this is on our website, but in order just to kind of show you what that looks like. So this is just a comparison of what is CBDA versus CBD, right? And how it comes from the raw plant. I think you were referencing this. How we do the testing in the COA, complete chain of custody. We know exactly where the, the hemp plants were grown and how. And then this just is a, a photographic representation, graphic representation of, of our process and how it's different. So if you want to find that on the transparency page on our website, there's also a what is CPDA because we know there's a major educational component. This is, it's different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, and I think I, your transparency page is, yeah, really fun to look at. Thank like, you for diving deep into the website, Holly. <laughs> yeah. That's I, awesome. I, yes. Get over there here. I'm going to send every, I, I could share my screen. I have it up. Um, I love that page, but yeah, definitely check out the website and check out that page. Cause there's um, you know, to understand that process and sort of how it's extracted is important. 
um, and and realizing how how the how the science works, not only you know from the process standpoint, but within the body is really cool. Yeah, yeah and the best way is to try it. So, like Erin said, reach out. We're happy to bring samples. Yay! Okay, so as I mentioned before, Erin's uh, contact information is everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> All the social media. So it is Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn. Perhaps there's a social media that I'm missing. Uh, but the fact that I, I've said this before, the fact that I actually have a Twitter page is really something short, of, nothing short of extraordinary. <laughs> that sort of person. But it's there, it's all there. Um, and then also, you can get uh, Aaron's information uh, and the link to their website from our website as well. So there's two places. Uh, Stacy is actually our meet the member feature this month. And so you can see her on our homepage, uh, but also from there, you can go to our, um, under our membership category, um, there's a drop down, and it has our current uh, vendor partners that are listed and um, Planetary is there, of course, with direct um, email link to Aaron, phone number, and website. So make sure you check it out there. And mm -hmm. ladies, I'm so grateful for this. Thank you so much. Thank we you. That was a cool, I liked that. I like the, I like the Oprah style. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. I'm, I'm down with that format for sure. Uh, that was really fun and really engaging and enlightening for sure. Um, I, I learned a lot as I always do every week. Um, and speaking of learning every week, so next week, um, we are not doing a virtual because it is the first week of, um, of the month and we always dedicate the first week of every month to wellness. So um, we'll publish a, a wellness blog. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, that'll be on our website. We'll also um, promote that of course across social media, but then the week after, um, so two weeks from today, I believe it's the 12th if I'm not mistaken, don't hold me to the date, but it is a Tuesday and it is the second Tuesday of July. Um, we are here with Skin Science Solutions at 12 noon Mountain Time, both on Zoom if you wanna join the conversation, or if you just wanna listen in while you're working away at your desk, um, pull us up on Facebook and, uh, and listen to the conversation there. So thank you all so much again for your time, your energy, your insight, your passion. This was truly wonderful. And um, we're just honored to have you as a uh, vendor partner. So thank you. Likewise, thank you. Thank you. you. <laughs> all right, ladies, let me stop recording here really quick. I will have to cut that out.